All right, Bob, let's do it. So this is a sobering story of an engineering error that had profoundly tragic consequences. It's a reminder that uh, some of the biggest mistakes we make in life are in hindsight the most obvious. It's a reminder we're all human, we're all fallible. Built in 1980, the Hyatt Regency featured a large atrium lobby, which was a signature design feature of upscale hotels at the time. And it was situated between the hotel tower and the functioning block, which housed meeting rooms and the health club, to allow guests to access from the hotel tower to the function block a pair of stacked suspended walkways was provided at the fourth and the second level, and a single offset walkway overlooked the atrium at the third level. Soon after the hotel opened, it began to host tea dances in the uh, atrium lobby, a perfect venue for that, and they had uh, live big band music and dancing and these social gatherings became uh, extremely popular, such that on July 17, 1981, a local TV crew was shooting video of the event, and this photo was taken from that footage, and you can see on the suspended walkways, there's a couple of dozen people, but down below there are many more standing, sitting, and dancing. The band was playing Satin Doll when at 7.15 p.m., the connections to the fourth level walkway failed. The second level walkway suspended from the fourth impacted the lobby floor first, followed immediately by the fourth level walkway. First responders arrived quickly from the hospital located just a block away, and they worked through that horrible night rescuing survivors and retrieving victims. Uh, local contractors provided heavy equipment to help uh, remove people from the wreckage. In terms of loss of life, the Hyatt disaster was and still is the most significant structural failure in U.S. history. 114 people died. By comparison, the recent uh, uh, Surfside condominium collapse in, in Miami had 98 fatalities. The forensic investigations quickly zeroed in on the fourth level connection where the failure had obviously initiated. And it was apparent that the box beam where the failure occurred was a pretty lousy detail. It didn't have much guts and it, it had very limited amount of weld. But of greater significance was the hanger rod detail at the end of the box beam. As originally shown on the original drawings, it consisted of a single threaded rod from the roof down to the second walkway with a nut and a washer at the second and fourth level. But that would have been a bugger to install. Think about it, those long rods threading those nuts 30-some feet. So the, the uh, steel fabricator uh, revised the detail to make it more constructible, and he came up with an offset detail shown on the right, and the consequence consequences of that were profound. Consider the example of two climbers hanging off of a single continuous rope by their right arms. Assume they each weigh 200 pounds. The load on each climber's arm there is just 200 pounds, their own self-weight. Now consider the revised configuration where the rope has been cut into two pieces and the upper climber is holding the lower rope with his left hand. The load on that upper climber's right hand is now 400 pounds. It has doubled. And so on that horrible night, that connection at the far end of the box beam was seeing the load from the fourth level walkway and the second level walkway, and it essentially ripped out of the grasp of the end of that box beam. Sadly, the calculation that you would do to analyze either the original detail or the revised one was a simple problem in statics, a course that a structural engineering student would take his or her sophomore year. It's a one-page calculation. 
It doesn't require any kind of computer. It was that simple. So all the investigators agree for the Catholics in the audience, the venial sin was the, was the lousy box beam detail, but the moral sin, the fatal flaw, was that staggered connection that the erector came up with to make it easier to construct. There was considerable finger pointing between the fabricator and the designer, but ultimately the design firm and the engineer of record, Jack Gillum, both lost their licenses to practice engineering. Gillum, to his credit, spent his remaining years giving talks like this to, to caution engineers to not make his same mistakes. The hotel, the design, and construction were gone over with a fine-tooth comb before it was reopened. The three hanging walkways were eliminated. They did provide a second-level walkway on the atrium supported by massive concrete columns. The hotel's been inspected many, many times in the last 40 years. Uh, most recently, just a year ago, uh, Sheridan has now replaced Hyatt as the innkeeper. I often wonder, as guests check in to the hotel today, do they even know the history of the hotel? You know, um, for the last 40 years, I've been asked, and I've asked myself many times, if I had been the engineer reviewing those shop drawings, would I have caught that mistake? Would I have realized the consequences of that revised detail? The short and sobering answer to that question is, I don't know. I'd like to think so, but I just don't know.